Well, our position is very clear, and it's a common position of the Austrian yeah. government. Um, yes, we want Ukraine to be clearly anchored within the European model of life. Um, but we all know there is no fast-track procedure for accession. Look at the Western Balkans. And the second point I'm making is we have to be aware that we have a responsibility towards Ukraine, but also towards Moldova and the countries of the Western Balkans. Two of them are already in accession negotiations. Bosnia-Herzegovina has applied two years ago already for, to get the candidate status, and North Macedonia and Albania have been waiting now for years to start the accession negotiations, and North Macedonia has even been ready to change the name of the country. So here we are called upon, we have our responsibilities, and what I said publicly is we have to rethink our whole neighborhood policy. Mm -hmm. um, just granting candidate status doesn't solve anything. It wouldn't push Putin back. It wouldn't make the life of the Ukrainians better. So we have to rethink how to include them more closely in our common market, how to get them to experience the economic benefits. Um, and without losing the end you know, goal out of sight, but we have to rethink how we are progressing because these templates we had in the past, we had full-blown membership, we have the economic area, and then we have association agreements. These are not fitting for what we are experiencing now. We have, to, we have to realize that enlargement is a geopolitical thing and not a bureaucratic, legalistic approach. But one of the things that I have heard the, throughout this conference is that a new mechanism should be created exactly to give Ukraine rapid access to the EU. Would Austria oppose the creation of a, a new mechanism to help Ukraine joining the EU faster? Well, not at all. That's actually what I called for in the last couple of days, that we have to rethink our neighborhood policy. And the only thing I'm saying is we, have not, we shouldn't forget about the Western Balkan. This is a country, with, a region which is surrounded by EU member states. And we have to be aware that, yes, the focus is now on Ukraine. The war is taking place there. But Russia's eyes might not only lie on Ukraine. They have the capacity to be spoilers in Bosnia-Herzegovina, but also in North Africa. Think about Libya. Think about Syria and the Middle East. So I believe we are called upon to think again. And the Eastern Partnership, the way we developed it the last couple of years, is basically dead. So we have to find a new conception. And we have to leave these old templates behind us, saying there's, that you can negotiate for 10, 15 years, and then you might become a member. We don't have the time. It's either our model of life or somebody else's model of life. And we want ours to prevail. One of the things we've witnessed in the wake of this invasion is, of course, uh, the wish of Finland and Sweden of potentially joining NATO and ending the neutral policy that they've had for several mm -hmm. years. Is Austria considering joining NATO? Well, there's a difference. Finland and, and Sweden are not neutral, stick to sense, so they have been non-aligned. There are three member states of the European Union which have a neutrality status, that's Ireland, Malta and Austria. And we are, we are happy to engage with NATO. We have the Partnership for Peace, and we will continue that. But there's no discussion and no need in Austria to change the policy. Neutrality is very clearly anchored in the public eye and the public mind here in Austria, and it has served as well. Um, but yes, as other countries, we have a debate in Austria, and I believe rightfully so, to increase defense spending. We will do so, and we have to pose ourselves the question, what shall and can we contribute to European security? Because that's actually our, you know, uh, we are not members of NATO. We will not become members of NATO. For us in our security policy, the European Union is adamant.